Tony D, um, Life and Times of Tony D. I'm Armando Vasquez, Debbie's assistant. Hi, I'm Debbie DeVries with the Cafe on A, and I'm glad to be back here. We missed you guys. Suzanne Bell with the Cardiac Media. Um, Caesar Pinole with the Communication and Public Information Office, and also with Art Club. Uh, my name is Javier Gomez. Uh, I run the Advocates Cultural Arts Center. Hi, I'm Carlos Luce, and I represent myself. George Sand and Law Oxford and Film Society. Good afternoon, Grace, Magic Crawley Hoffman, City of Oxford, uh, City Manager's Office. Steve Fisher, Assistant City Attorney. <laughs> Did you determine when it's part time? Did you say how many hours did I? I it's hard to hear. I didn't say. We're looking at uh, about an average of 15. Okay. Uh, we did have a, um, a little bit of a hiccup, uh, hiccup uh, with uh, some of the 
parties that haven't yet submitted it, but uh, not successfully as yet. We'll continue to work on that. And um, look forward to completion of projects and, and activities. Uh, and remind everyone that, as we did in our letter of disbursement, that a final report of all projects are, are due by uh, the end of the fiscal year, which is June 3rd. Um, nobody present here is um, tardy, correct? That is correct. That's correct. I wanted to say that, so in case anybody was wondering. The other thing is, uh, we were, I was hoping personally to um, see the reports. I haven't, if I can. And also, more importantly, what are the activities? <coughs> that we, you know, we talked about getting more public information about what actually has is happening yes, with the money. Things that we, some things we can't go to. But other things are public, and it would be good to know what all the, all the buzz is that's going on. Yes, I'll remind you, we would like to sort of under the grant project recognition of four, we would like to know uh, of those events uh, so that we can work with our um, public information officer to get them placed on the, the city website. But if, if you have uh, upcoming events that are as part of your project, we'd like to know about that. Uh, Dan is the clearinghouse for that. Um, so just keep us. Uh, Dr. Cortez and then Dr. Uh, <clears throat> just a question. I was looking here, and I don't see it, but can we put on the uh, agenda for next month, uh, repeating this for the next fiscal year, repeating a grant, uh, an RFP, and it's not too early to put out an RFP. I think we can uh, talk about it on the next, put on the agenda. Could you please put it on the agenda? Uh, and I just wanted to say, in terms of publicity, we have one of our art, uh, grantees, Tony D, right here. And he has been going around to many of the events and actually filming them and putting them online. So um, we do have a wealth of information right from within our grant recipients. So that might be something that could be connected with our PIO and be something that we could use to publicize. And then the other request that I would have, is there a way that we could um, summarize some of the great grant recipients and be able to have that presented maybe at one of the city council meetings as um, just some of the good things that are happening in the city? Because I, I know just from um, the witness of a lot of the activities that have gone on through here that there have been some phenomenal um, art projects <coughs> and um, progress from some of the or developing artists from what we've been able to do, and I think it's something we can all be really proud of. So I would request that we um, brag about it. Can you hear me? Because it's hard yes. for me to hear you guys, okay? <laughs> Thanks. Ditto. Very same comments. Ditto? Okay, Ditto. I like this. Okay, uh, could I, I ask Tony uh, how, to, how to access this information? Um, it's at a website, and I'll post it on your email. The Life and Times of Tony D. Dot org. Dot com. Org. So 
uh, you know, calling it our Floricanto celebration. Obviously, it's our Cesar Chavez celebration as well. So, uh, you know, if if that's something that that the committee would like to see, you know, I mean, that would be uh, an event that we can showcase and broaden it and take it instead of me doing it at Heritage Square, we could do it at Plaza Park and and invite all the different groups. I'm taking uh, from twelve to three just to do it for my for my group alone, and that's that's everything performing. One last one. Just to highlight uh, what Dr. Bree said relative to Tony D, I think uh, there's many benefits to this program. More importantly, uh, we've seen grassroots individuals and organizations uh, certainly engage in promoting their work. But more importantly, he's done a lot of just individual interviews from people you would never think that would be involved from the youth at Cafe on A. <coughs> you know, other people that have attended the musical events. I think the council and the general public would like to hear feedback from just individuals that have attended things. That's your true measurement of success. And he's got a lot of that on his website. I'd just like to remind people, of course, that everybody's always welcome to come to public, speak at public comment at the council. Uh, because it, a lot of people are watching, uh, besides the folks in the audience, and it's a good way to get information on Several of you really take advantage of that, but not enough people okay. talk about cultural events uh, at, at City Council. So, you know, you were there last week, uh, Abel Magani. Mm -hmm. um. One of the things that uh, we wanted to do um, was, one, make absolutely sure that we complied with the eight, ten organizations and artists that we were fiscally responsible for. And so, I love the idea of culminations, uh, events, but arts is about doing stuff each and every day. Um, and creating that type of synergy, that type of awareness. And, and that awareness and that energy has to be fueled by what the city does. So the city of Oxnard is the city that cares, let's add, that cares about arts and culture. So that it becomes um, something that is is promoted and pushed uniformly and collectively. I know we have two or three organizations, even within this 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 body, that while superficially they may work together, uh, they could work much much closer together to promote the notion of arts and culture. I don't know that yet today that the whole city supports this notion of art. We do, but this whole city does. This whole city seems to support some other things as well. We can combine this so that on an everyday basis, art and culture is the driving force, force that transforms, that prevents, that remediates, that, that does so many things that we're talking about. And I think that the next subject is gonna be that. So I really, um, where cities are successful, that's what happens. The pulse beat is art and culture. Um, uh, uh, my, my question was uh, in the city council and the public uh, address section. Uh, would, would that be feasible for, so like, for Tony D to uh, plug in his his instead of speaking, putting a a, a, a video that that will be highlighted that will be. <coughs> That will be his, his uh, three minute three three minute presentation. You have to organize that because you have to uh, get the go ahead. Uh, no, no, I just. But uh, if everybody has three minutes, otherwise it has to be a, like a study session or something. Yeah, no, no. What, what I'm saying is that yeah. to allow him instead of verbally just talking, he can go ahead and, and say, "Well, here's my video and plug it on for three minutes." That'd be great. You know. uh, I think Grace. Yeah. You'll just need to submit it in advance so that the IS people can make sure there's no virus on that, make sure it'll work on their system. I was just wondering, for something like that, it, it, would it be possible to agendize it 
So what literally we have is maybe a, a little bit longer, and it could be um, something that would be a presentation of some of the things that have been going on from yes. art and public places or, or at that level. And then part of it could be um, a composite of some of the things that Tony has been able to film. And if somehow that's, that's too awkward, then I would suggest that maybe a group of us get together and put in our three minutes and then share them for Tony so that, because I think three minutes is, is too short a time to literally get a perspective for some of the things that he would be looking at. It, I think it would be so fragmented that I think it would be more editing time than, than is probably feasible. We can do a summary response to the council yeah. the, towards the end of the grant cycle and, and use that information. I think it would be so powerful. I think it would be powerful for people to understand how the uh, money was being spent and then also to inspire people to get involved in the arts. I'll take some work to uh, get it organized and put on the agenda. How should we do that? Uh, we can uh, talk about it more at the next meeting, but uh, we can, you know, staff could leave the, the scheduling and, and transmittal of the information and work with the major subcommittee to put together the, the actual substance of the presentation. Um, just speaking of that, I will not be in attendance at the next meeting, and so I have to. Uh, March. I am attending the. National League of Cities meeting in Washington, uh, which makes uh, it necessary to either reschedule or have it be information only. Maybe. 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 Yeah, we're going to try to figure out what to do with that comment. We can do it. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> we can do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, Carmen, I, I just thought uh, you know, that, that, that would be a good way to have it go citywide, you know, and it's on there. And on March the 31st? No, no, we're talking about the Tony D's okay. project mm -hmm. would be if we can interface it and, uh, and also with Dr. DeVries say, you know, how it could be more of a, I think a, a complete package rather than, you know, three minutes and you get a better picture. Okay, and uh, for your event, is taking place on the 31st of August? Yes, March. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's that already. Okay. I already paid the bill on it, so. You, you, <laughs> have, a, you got a permit and all that? Uh, well, I, I asked them over the Heritage Square. They didn't ask me for a permit. Okay. I was thinking. No, no, no. For the Plaza Park, I know I would have to go get the permits and all that, but uh, but that's why what I said, uh, I have my look at the, the, the Heritage Square. It's already secure, so that's already booked for that day. And you'll get some publicity about that. Yeah, I, I, I've just been kind of low-key about everything that I do. <laughs> <and Not everybody. laughs> but I've just been focusing on the kids. So.
So we have a lot of work to do on that. It's a major uh, task, I say. So, next steps. I think we had a couple of interested parties <coughs> yes. there to talk about uh, getting together and talking about next steps. So I was wondering if there's yeah. any report that. Well, I know that we um, had a, a committee meeting planned and we haven't been able to gather everyone together specifically for it, but I, I've been in contact with uh, Maya Lyles, who's the assistant to Bill Strickland in Pittsburgh, and they're um, ready to proceed on their part if, if and when we're ready to uh, go to the next phase. The next phase would be to, to set up the um, preliminary steps for the study sessions to see about going about it. As you know, they have pilot uh, stages where they help a city set up how to um, get businesses to support uh, setting up the centers. So for example, they have major corporate sponsors that have helped in the other, they have 10 uh, centers being set up that are partially funded by the U.S. Congress and major corporate sponsors such as Starbucks and um, other large organizations and what they need to do is have a commitment from a city that they are wanting to begin this. It works with uh, setting up jobs for the local community as predominantly uh, the interests are in arts and culture of setting up a center that will work with uh, the youth and help them build skills for the future, similar to the Manchester Craftsman Guild and the Build Well Training Center. And so um, they are just waiting for our uh, go ahead to say that we would be interested in pursuing the, the first phase of looking at that. The, the initial level was for us to understand what he could do and what he has done in um, Pittsburgh and, and how dynamic a, a change in the community of Pittsburgh it made and then in the, the pilot programs that he set up. And as um, Carmen um, has mentioned, his work has been recognized by, um, the, he's on the Presidential Commission for Arts and Humanities, he's been recognized by the MacArthur Foundation as a Genius Award, and he's well known literally around the world for, for what he's been able to do to transform communities through art and culture and the connections with um, uh, major businesses to integrate uh, those to transform communities. It sounds like Yes. Or that subcommittee. Yes. Meet, it it is. Off, uh, and get, get a little more focused. And obviously, it's a ways to get the city buy in, you know, because we need a, a vote of the majority. Um, bring it as a, you know, a little bit more detail, quite a bit more detail. Carmen, uh, what we've been doing is um, we've been uh, reinventing literally this wheel for eight years now. The only thing Bill brings us that we don't have here is major, major funding clout on a national level, on a huge national level, in an area where very few people are successful, and that's art. He can get it. Um, he needs half a million dollars to give us that. 150,000. 150,000, excuse me. That's what he needs. What we have here is we already have a building. Uh, Abel's in that building. That's our building. We already have a building. That's the building or that, building. or something like that. that. That's the building that ideally Strickland said would work. We think that that would work as well. Uh, we have a very limited funding mechanism of about two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 here. We don't want to give it to Bill. He can get his own money. Uh, Bill is an incredible, wonderful guy, but he needs $150,000 to go beyond this. We just spoke to the police chief two or three days ago, and she came in with a new idea. And everybody that we're going to speak to is going to come up with new ideas. Everybody that gets elected or has positions of power is going to come in with new ideas. She's bringing in some people, she says, from, uh, yeah. from Minneapolis or something. So every time Debbie and I sit down and listen, it's, it's, it's the reinvention of the proverbial wheel. We have the people that can do this. Do we have the political will? I think that we have now. Do we have the right players in the city council? I think that we do now. Do we have the infrastructure and the genius he is here amongst us? Absolutely. We can do it. Um, and if we do it and we move Strickland 
He's not a dumb man. He's a very smart man. He will follow and help us with what we need. So we got to play a little power game with him. We got to leverage him rather than the other way around. But leveraging means actually doing something. And um, this first year is an incredible first step. I would see us as a committee maybe inviting him, helping him to come on in, and then identifying a building where we can all get together and work. The city has a lot of those buildings. Well, I'm not sure we do actually have those buildings because of the redevelopment. Some of them are under, we can't really do anything in the center. That's a complicated story. Abel, what's the status of the Bank of Abel? Right. Uh, it just sold, actually, oh. to uh, yeah. uh, Barclays, now Barclay. For sure. So. so they are, um, yeah, they'll be moving in there. Yeah. Hmm. But unfortunately, Carmen, it was it was it was vacant for three to four years, and my, that's hindsight. But we could have moved on that a long time ago. There's as as my brother is saying right here. There's other buildings. Yeah. There there's other buildings. Okay. Um, why do you think you still have, you still have to have that community? Yes. Yeah, okay. We can't do it here. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Who's gonna call it? Okay. Okay. Who else was on that committee? It's you, me. You, Wanda, Deborah, Anybody else want to join? I'll join. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You two folks? Okay, absolutely. Please. Okay. Two more. And I'm sorry, what is your name? Uh, Alisa Renee. Yes. Um, fiscal magic. Yes. Um, you said that he would could open the door on a national level to corporations. Yes. I know yes. you two have been very steeped in what he's yes. done in other yes. cities. Do you find it, is it that he's opening connections to corporations that he knows, or is it still devolved down to the local site to connect up with a large corporation in their area? He went to uh, Malibu Orchids and. Um, did something that everybody thought in the world was impossible. He went to Malibu Orchids, had um, Amado Vasquez develop a prototype of a greenhouse that he could take to Pittsburgh, which as you know, gets lots and lots of snowfall during the winter. Uh, he is now one of the leading national exporters of orchids out of, out of, uh, he was able to get Dole, and he was able to get some other people. So he can get, he can get local monies. Also eBay and Starbucks, which are not So, yeah, so in other words, he is able to literally get things from outside mm -hmm. the area, because as you know, we've all been for years tapping right. into yes. the local yes. area. Yes. So that would be a fresh yes. outlet. Thank you. Both locally and nationally, he has that leverage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
merchandise. It's a little bit stiff for artists, but this is what a, what a city commission would be. Um, we, there is an opportunity for discussion, et cetera, making a plan, but it's not exactly organic the way a lot of your individual groups are. So that is, but that is something to keep in mind when we want to do it. On the other hand, many cities do have cultural arts, very strong, vibrant cultural arts commission, not committee like we have. Not that we're not strong and vibrant, but it's a different animal. So um, I'd, I'd like to hear what people think about it. Perhaps I'd defer to Council Member Padilla. Well, I think uh, having a commission, um, like Armando mentioned, would create, I think, uh, an overall, an avenue as to, so the city can gain an importance as to what arts and culture can do to a city. So I think it's a great idea to possibly have that additional group and uh, incorporate a little bit more into how the city functions and have it be a you know, vital component of, of, uh, of our future and uh, our future success with our youth and youth and young adults. So I think it would be a great, great idea to possibly get that going. Dr. Cortez? Uh, yeah, I'd like for you to urge you to. I would like the, the city council to move in the direction of creating a cultural arts commission and would add to Ms. Padilla's comment, you know, not just youth and young adults, but old people too, and uh, those in between. Because art doesn't know age. question that I have is, would there necessarily need to be um, both of the city council um, individuals at that meeting so that it would not pose a, a difficulty for a quorum? Because well, I think that's one of the... Generally, if you have a commission, then you jettison the, the council direct involvement. Right. So, so this committee would be extinguished. Okay. Well, I actually heard two things. Um, I heard that you might even be able to have both, right? You could have a commission and a committee? No, it's a citizen's advisory committee. You wouldn't have that. No, no uh, council members sit on any of our citizen's advisory No, actually, I was meaning that if you... I'm not saying that, that I think this is possible, uh, that it's necessary, but if you had... The, this is a culture arts committee. If you had this, could you also have a cultural arts commission? Well, I, my point about the cultural arts commission is that I think for the purposes of the report to council, it have to be very clear what the mission and the purpose exactly. and the responsibilities of a commission are. Um, that that is that would be necessary, I think, for the full <coughs> council to want to determine and take into consideration in, in establishing the commission. There are uh, budgetary implications, uh, staffing implications uh, for the, the formal, formal commission. This has been sort of an ad hoc uh, group to some degree, and, and uh, that probably would require more, more prioritization on the part of, of uh, city staff. So those are the sort of things that we would take into account and make the recommendation to them. So respectfully, so the position that's being considered of the part-time staff would that take more time or less time if, if you had a commission? Okay, but a, but a commission does not take the city council time as much as the staff time, is what you're saying? Okay. Yes, I, I, I think that a commission comes 
into existence when there's critical mass, when there's a demand, when there's a push, when there's an expertise, when there's a vision. Clearly, this, this, this committee has created that critical mass. Um, you guys have been super important in this process, but as we see, when you leave, oftentimes things stop, and it stopped two or three times this, this start of the year. Art should not stop, um, and it should be a commission that has um, a lateral leadership where a lot of people can partake in the decision making and in the input. Um, it shouldn't, however, preclude us from you know being able to access the money that we're accessing now. And it shouldn't preclude us also from being very active because it's our own commission to go after funding, to go after other resources, to develop and create and really make this thing grow as a city rather than a, a not afterthought, but 27 years ago, it was an afterthought. And so I think that what we're doing is incredibly cutting edge work. And I think a commission would then put us into a next level. Um, I'm very excited about this whole idea of a commission. And also, too, I think the commission will lend itself so that you guys are more of a proactive and agents in that commission. Because if, I mean, we're here with the committee, however, you guys live it and breathe it every single day. So I think that if you guys take the reins of running that commission, I think the, the products or the progress that that commission can make is a lot, is going to be in more depth and um, with greater force than you know, us as a, as a council leading this committee. Um, it probably gets to be it's a totally different thing than we've done in the city before. Yeah. And maybe we could do that. And I would recommend that we take a look at what LA does now. LA is a charter city that can kind of do what they want to do mm -hmm. um, because every charter we're a general law city, so we can't just go do things. Yes. Correct? Yes. So I don't know what uh, limitations we have, but I think I think what is emerging is the idea of being a hybrid. I don't know if that's possible in our city. So yeah. but I'm Jim and I'm sorry. Can't you put together can you get together a subcommittee? put the samples together of mission statements and responsibilities and then present that and kind of refine it so we know what we're talking about. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. And then also we could get some insight as to what the first step to creating a commission would be. I'd like to be on that committee, if we can. Yeah. And is, uh, one quick question, are we looking into having both or would, I mean, because I know Debbie did mention that yeah. I was just asking, it, it, to, to clarify, is that what we were talking about? Or so, yeah. I think it, a commission would be the so way to go. The yeah. Yeah. Yes, the sole commission, okay. yes. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know, I, again, go back to the point. That I know that uh, it was mentioned that we're reinventing the wheel. This Arts Commission has existed in the city of Oxnard for many, many a year, and it was structured, and uh, obviously it was uh, staff run, and uh, I sat on that commission, and uh, as well as uh, other other interested parties of our community, and I know that their focus at that time was strictly to preserve the the arts gallery of the city of Oxnard, you know, whatever gallery of art that they had, they have an art collection that that, that was the intent, that, and uh, but yet at the same token they were trying to move into the, the avenue of promoting cultural activities throughout the city, but it had no bite uh, in the sense that, that it didn't offer any uh, financial uh, assistance to artists in our community. The other structure that was mentioned about having a, a hybrid of, a, of city uh, uh, <coughs> council members on the, on the commission, we, it, it exists right now right with the PAC. You know, you have the structure already with the PAC where you have city as well as community people on the same committee watching over the, per the performing arts center. That's a non-profit, separate non-profit. Okay. A little yeah. bit distinct. Okay, all right. I don't, I don't know about this, so I'd like to... Yeah, because it, I, I mean, I, I just look at what we already have, and it exists already as far as formulas, you know, um, so they're, they're here already. Right, okay, but, but you know, I 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, real quickly, I support the recommendation for a new paradigm commission. And uh, we, we are elated that we have a, a new council, uh, having been involved with the community and the various other entities that have been raised. Um, you know, what's beautiful about this group, there's diversity in this room. And I'm hoping that we can move from the past and do something that's relevant for the synergy and uh, flow and momentum of what's taking place at this time. Because I think we have uh, ideas that we like to recommend from the, from the community uh, relative to making this effort sustainable. Uh, and it may mean that, you know, this, the commission, uh, once it's in, in, endowed with, with authority, and we definitely want to look at, at what the city attorney recommends to make it congruent with what the community wants to do. And, and be progressive in, in, in that form uh, because of the new era that has ushered in with the council. We, we have a window of time to do that, but but relative to you know looking at different revenue streams that we might want to recommend and, and take to the citizen citizen read like or like San Diego, like Portland, like other urban downtowns have done to foster arts, music, and diversity. Absolutely. You know, and that, that's what we want to do. So you know. Appreciate all the other structures and paradigms, but I'm about, you know, and I know other people, this is the new paradigm. Mm -hmm. Alisa, you have your hand up. Yeah. Well, I think that it's, um, it's very important to be able to promote the arts, because one thing about the arts is that um, they're, they're, it sees no color uh, boundaries, and people are able to you know, come out and, and enjoy music, enjoy the arts. You know, they're able to be educated in things that they wouldn't have the opportunity to know about. There are people that have the love of the arts to be able to come forward and, and be part of it. So I think that it's, it's, uh, it's important to have the diversity. It's important to have um, the beat of the community involved you know, and what's going on, and I think that um, that this particular commission would be something that would be a win-win situation. But uh, going back to the last one, uh, it will be crucial that we have city on there because this, it, just having a commission, it will become back like the, the commission of the past where it had no power, no clout, and I, I think that the impact that uh, elected officials being on the, on the on the board will have more significance for its continuation and for the implementation and also the uh, solicitation of funds that that will be needed to uh, subsidize the the artist groups that we do have in our community because otherwise it's going to be like like the years past that we support the arts but that's all. Okay, uh, we all I think it's recognized that arts right economy. And so we, it's very important for our city with the right mix here. If we can't say who again was to say who wanted to be on that exploration, those two folks, those two folks, Yes. Okay. So I got it. All right. Carmen Tunu people also came in, the One Love Dance people, uh, if they could introduce themselves. I apologize. We can Introduce yourself, Tunu. My name is Julie, and I represent the uh, One Dance of Love Company here in Osman, and also Lucy and Isaac. <laughs> Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. I had forgotten about the meeting, so I hurry to be able to be on time. Um, I was one of the awarded artists. <laughs> okay, terrific. Um, all right, so um, we'll have to organize that meeting yes. quickly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's already got Thank such you. as I want to work. Let's uh, move on so we can stay within our hour limits. That's a problem too with this committee, hour limit. Um, and we both have some place that's to be in for quite a bit. So, um, cultural arts fund balance. Yes, you have the attached um, form to the DPD system. Uh, our balance is a little over $174,000. So, um, for the next time,
line uh, in terms of our discussion on, uh, on the additional grant cycle uh, contribution towards the uh, Strickland project, uh, some of the things we've talked about here relative to commission. There's a lot of competing, uh, potentially competing uh, demands on that, that balance. Can I ask a question, Adam? Yes. Um, I understood that we spent 197,000 on the grants, so I'm I'm wondering why it shows that we spent 210,000. It was 200,000. I don't know what the uh, what the 10,000 going would be. I'll we'll have to check. It was actually less than the 200,000 that I recall. It wasn't the exact 200,000. So I, I'm I'm really wondering about well, we'll that difference. Back. Yes. And then, then I'm also wondering what that 36,322 is representing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll, we'll break that out. We, we must have had some expenses that were not in the grant that we had in the That's a big percentage. Um, the other thing is we're looking to take uh, some funding out of here for the staff. The question I have is maybe we should quickly prioritize those, what order that we um, I want to take them since there are quite a few. Well, I said we should do the RFP process first. <laughs>
discussion of future grants. I think that's part of it. Would you agree, Dr. Cortese? Yeah. Uh, it, it, actually, I'm, I'm still stewing on the, um, the the last page, you know, where the, uh, the uh, this financial report that I. <laughs> Uh, I mean, to me, if we're going to talk about the sustainability of it, we, we need a financial report that's more detailed, yes. like the kind my board demands of me uh, at the Atro, where, you know, the uh, uh, expenses are, are more clearly delineated and the income is more clearly delineated on a month-to-month -month basis, sort of a, I don't know, p and and a balance sheet. Uh, I don't know if city bookkeeping does that kind of stuff. But, uh, I mean, uh, like how much money has come into the fund? And uh, are we limited to development fund money? We are currently. And I, I have urged city council, well, I've urged in the past that you explore other sources of income to the arts fund. Uh, maybe look at the way other entity, cities do it. You know, I know our neighbor to the, whatever the north that is, uh, takes hotel money. Or something, I, you know. So I heard, um, and and of course, then you you get into <coughs> fighting over the slices of the pie. Yeah. So let me back up and just say I, I would appreciate a more detailed yeah. report. Debbie just showed me yeah. uh, that what was expended was hundred and what was one, authorized one. was one ninety seven five hundred, not two ten, and um, you know it, I I just feel it. it I think yes. you, you get you get my yes. message. You yes. Get more Yes. Carmen, um, first, first thing, uh, the work that you guys have done uh, this first year has been exceptional. Debbie and I have been after money for many, many years, and this was truly a democratic, um, well-thought-out process. Debbie and I didn't agree on everything, but it was a great job that you guys did. Having said that, and I mean that sincerely, um, we have... You know, this, and it's not to disparage anybody, but we have this kind of paperwork and we can't hold people accountable. We're fearful that if, uh, you know, Carmen and Darina leave, that, you know, we're not going to have any clout. We have clout, ladies and gentlemen, if we stay together. That's how we have clout. And we work on visions together. We'll have more clout than we can envision if we stay together as a commission. And then we'll get the timely reports. And then we'll get the measure all monies. And then we'll get the CDBG monies. And then we'll be able to go after other monies. People do not be fearful of moving forward. Uh, this body of elected officials has done a tremendous job. We need to take the reins, be big boys, big girls, and move forward. <clears throat> How does this young little guy that doesn't say anything get so much money? How do you do that, brother? Share it with us. So this is like the market for the same You go out to these big companies and you ask for money and you pitch a deal. There you go. There you go. Good job, Ernest. One of the comments wrote up the list. Um, it is incomplete because we're all working on other activities. So I think. The two or three priority areas, you know, the grants, the sustainability, the fiscal uh, reporting, are, are that's three major things right there. So uh, we can add to the list because we all can add things yeah. that we're working on, and I don't want to overwhelm you at this, at this point. Okay. Any other comments? Um, 
All right, let's go on to uh, committee business. Recent experiences. Many members may relate recent experiences. Uh, let's see. I saw a great movie on this. <laughs> uh, I, uh, what I, I did say is I actually made a, a communication with George uh, last night late when I heard that Bless Me Ultima, which is one of my favorite books in the world, was written by Rodolfo Anaya. Uh, it's now made into a movie. And um, really thrilled. I'd love to see it come to our city and maybe uh, not just have it for a showing, but have it for an event. So I'll just leave that with you. Well, I, I haven't done any work on it. It's going to be released, I think, February 22nd. Yeah. 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 Only in LA. Yes. It's, not it's, a, it's a limited release, and that's all I know. I contacted them, and I'll, I'll get back to them. A combination of readings, you know, so that like kind of say, you know, inviting some of our local authors that we have that can read, like uh, Amanda Pérez, and uh, well, that's uh, yeah. Kathy Contreras, you know, we have, you know, from our community, you know, and along with other writers that we have that can go in with that as far as Bliss Me Do you really know this novel? Oh, yeah. Not everybody you don't yes. know it. Just to say, events coming up, um, Tim Pompey from our group is having a book signing at the Café on A on March 3rd. And then on March uh, 7th, Paul Flores um, is going to be doing a workshop for youth and then also um, a hip-hop hip show in the evening. And then on March 8th, Frank Barajas from Cal State Channel Islands, um, Dr. Frank Barajas is going to be a book signing for his new book um, at the Café on A. That's an I kind of moved over from committee business. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> May I go back? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you were saying. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you were talking about. Sorry. Unless not anything in particular, I know that, um, you know, I, I, it would be nice to maybe get a, a master calendar because a lot of the events that yes. I think uh, I'll get mentioned, uh, would be, I work with students and I do believe that a lot of them, um, you know, I could possibly coordinate some events with that. For example, I know that um, in May we're actually going to go be watching the West Symphony here at the OPAC. So, I mean, if we can kind of tap into other, some of the initiatives that you guys are doing more at a local level, I think that would be great. So, you guys are doing good job. And can't wait to learn more about what each individual group is doing. Real quickly, I did attend the New West Symphony's latest um, performance in Oxnard. Uh, performing Arts Island was just one of those uh, visions, American visions, it was absolutely wonderful. And I also went to the Chinese reception for uh, a Chinese artist. Whose name I can't Her. Her. And is it, is it still up? Yes, it concludes this, uh, through this Sunday. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, California, my... It was, Cal it was California Southwest Landscapes done in Chinese ink painting style. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, question, question for, for Mr. Winnegar. Um, uh, was the computer glitch that you had? Because I, I kept on looking for when the interim report was uh, supposed to be submitted. And they said, didn't you the email? I said, no, I, I looked and I looked and I sent you an email. And you know, I've got, I'm not going to play it on the Before you go to the announcements, uh, uh, the New West Symphony, after you guys got in contact, you know, we just uh, were lucky to be there at the same time, but I, I grabbed the bull by the horns, and we, we are now negotiating 10 bucks a ticket per kid here for Oxnard. If we work together, we can kick it down, I'm sure, to 5 to $3. That's more workable for our kids, and then we could have all of our kids in Oxnard view something that they probably have never viewed before, and that's a symphony. So if um, I can work that and you guys can kind of back me up, then I'll keep hitting her up. And I know that the art students from the student, the student group that I work with, we're bringing about 180 yeah. students from 
throughout the Ventura County, Fillmore, Santa Paula, and and uh, LA, but I think they're charging us ten dollars a student, which we were able to negotiate. So I mean, I'm sure that if we can get to buy in some of the school districts and we're thinking about kids from probation. They're not going to have money. Or, yeah, could be. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. a lot of, maybe we can, I mean, I would say that it would be a possibility. Yeah. Well, the New West Symphony, they had, they came to my uh, screening on Monday night, and they gave me some information that said if a grandparent could bring their grandchild, they would get in for free. The grandparent would pay, but the child would pay for free. But it was a quick deal, but they do have programs. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they there, had their uh, leverage. Uh, Friday days ago, there were a number of children there yeah. who had come in for free. Yeah. So they have done that. Thank you. Let's go to group announcements. You want to start on that one? Yeah. Uh, Ernest, do you think? Group announcements. What's happening? What's happening with your life? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Uh, second uh, Saturday of the month, we have the Oxford Music Series Walk. Uh, we just had one uh, this past Saturday. Gil Valencia was a very good, uh, good show. We had a very good outcome. Uh, good for Gil Patty Open's book. Sold out. And next month we have uh, a jazz artist by the name of Isaac. And he's a saxophonist. He's going to be performing in the Sun of Centennial Plaza. <coughs> Another local group by the name of Coso, and also uh, a local uh, poetic artist by the name of Pilo. I think it was it. <laughs> it's Pilo that will be performing. But again, we're back to our normal schedule, which is the second Saturday of every month before groups come. Well, me? <laughs> um, I'm here today um, on behalf, and I would like to. Um, I guess lend my, I know this is announcements, but I didn't know where to say it, lend my expertise um, that I could. I used to live here. Um, I moved away to Temecula, and now I'm back. Um, however, I'd like to be involved. I sit on uh, CTGA, which is a center theater group um, affiliates in Los Angeles and downtown LA. And what you're talking about, I've, you know, for years have been dealing with. So, um, I would love to lend my hand as far as that is concerned. Also, um, I'm working um, with Chuck Dennis. Um, he's doing uh, 805's Got Talent, which will be in October. Uh, we are now working on another project called Rewind, Re bleh, bleh. <laughs> no, I can't even say it. Rewind the Music, where we will be having um, a workshop and conference along with having um, the culmination of the 805 Scott Talent at the end. And that'll be on October the 15th. So just wanted to let you know, we're gonna start uh, having a fundraiser on March the 23rd at uh, Skating Plus uh, to come out and start raising funds for that. Very quickly, uh, just to tag on Jace, we formed a uh, hip hop collective, which is uh, a group of young, positive hip hop musicians, uh, radio uh, professionals, etc., to try and uh, promote positive hip hop and you know other genres of music. They've been meeting uh, various places throughout the town, but I'm real excited about that group. And, and then secondly. Uh, we were blessed to have the mugshots book signing at the Cafe on A and brought celebrities uh, down to Oxnard. And uh, we have a, a pipeline now of uh, celebrities from Con Air and you know, other films. But we gave out 50 or 60 books to, to high school kids and did a book signing at Fifth Street. But now we want to do the mugshots art exhibit, which is a black and white internationally <coughs> recognized uh, exhibit on Ruin to Redemption life stories, probably at uh, 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 a couple of places, you know, between uh, the El Concilio place as well as Cafe and A. And, and uh, but we'll be looking at that about April 15th and have a big celebrity kickoff, you know, probably at Sugar Beach somewhere or, or, or whatever, but uh, a lot of interest from Hollywood celebrities on that. Your announcements. 
the things you've been doing, Jackie. Oh. Three or four wonderful art shows. I had two exhibitions, one in, in, uh, in the Harbor Village Gallery. It was very successful. Um, um, a lot of people came because uh, I knew a teacher from Oxnard College that uh, brought 400 students of the art appreciation class. So it was, uh, the, the exhibit was always having people. I, I did good, I sold a lot of pieces, and uh, I had another exhibition in Christmas time at the Café Oni, and uh, it was very good. I think uh, um, we're going to be having, uh, with Debbie, um, with Debbie's group and Armando's group, I will be talking to the kids, um, and, uh, and I keep doing art. Um, for me together to have another exhibition in the summer at Café Oni. You may or may not know, uh, but with that small grant, she was able to put at least three major shows. Jackie Biaggi is becoming, if not already, one of the preeminent sculptors in the world. Not in Oxnard, in the world. This woman has got a, an incredible following, and she has an incredible talent. And she is homegrown and, you know, a treasure. Yes, yes, we do. Um, looking forward to covering more and more. Um, I'm possibly try, I'm trying to get a film done by uh, the next day or so that will be at the uh, Student Digi on the 30th and the 29th at Oxnard College. So um, hopefully that will be done in the next day or so. so. In the course of the work that we're doing, uh, one of the things that we've found that there's many, many uh, writers that are not published, and in this day and age, we can do some self-publication. So what we want to do at the Cafe Anne, this has been a dream of mine since we've been here, is do a number of book shows, a uh, number of book signings as we have already, but to do it with homegrown Oxnard Ventura County writers you know, those closeted writers like myself, Debbie, and so many of us that have these manuscripts that we can self-print. Uh, maybe we can expose each other, and who knows, maybe there's the next great novel there. I think there is. Oxnard has had some incredibly talented writers, and we want to have, probably in the spring, a Oxnard uh, 805 kind of uh, book showing. I already shared <laughs> out of my time. Please come and support. Thank you. No announcements no. this time. Um, just, uh, we're planning a car show for, uh, next month over on A Street, uh, car form of art and so, so, um, starting to work on the permits though, so, okay, <laughs> inofficial. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, Saturday we had our pre-family day with the, uh, theme of the exhibit and the, you know, I think Sunday was, uh, the Asian, uh, New Year. We had over 120 uh, children and their parents and guardians with that. That was quite popular. We're uh, winding down this show. The next show will open on uh, March the 9th. It's a uh, work by a uh, Ventura County artist that's uh, uh, doing a very interesting series. It, uh, it's basically words, word painting, word pieces. Um, the, uh, it'll have a lot of good overflow into literature and literature as well. So that's what's going on in the museum. I have one. Yeah. Um, I do have a quick, uh, a brief announcement to make. Um, the One Love Dance Company, uh, we extended our uh, dance program. Uh, dance classes Monday through Friday, 7 to 8, and also Saturday and Sunday from 4 to 5. And everybody's welcome. Please support us. And um, um, this coming up Thursday, it's going to be, um, well, you know, uh, Valentine's Day is going to be our third anniversary uh, I mean, our dance classes. So please support us. Thank you. Uh, March the 24th. Uh, in the Colonia area, uh, we're organizing the uh, Cesar Chavez Memorial March. 
uh, highlighting the uh, focus on immigration reform. Uh, and so there's going to be a, you know, the Aztec dancers as well as our mariachi group and as well as our community and, and all, uh, an outreach to all, our, all the organizations in our, in our community to participate in this memorial march uh, to uh, you know, bring attention to the immigration issue in our country. So we're inviting everybody to come in and be part of it. So Tony, do you make sure? <laughs> We're going to be doing some presentations throughout the community at various high schools as well as college level CI. Uh, so I just shared that, but the, the 24th is the day that we're asking everybody to join us on the march. Uh, the 31st, where we're hosting our uh, our Puricanto uh, 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 showcase there at the, at the Heritage Square to celebrate. Uh, Youth and adults are involved in fulfilling their dreams through the arts. You know, so it's going to be children from the ages of two years old to as old as the heart can be. Oldest one is around 84 or 83, I forget. That will be performing. So we're inviting the community. That's an open, that's an open air uh, uh, concert. So that anyone can come and just celebrate with us. We're not charging anything. So. And that's part of the uh, part of how we're using the grant to subsidize all of that to make it uh, affordable and free to the community. Uh, along with that, we we have our ongoing activities Monday through Saturday from four to uh, nine or ten o'clock at night with our activities down on this street. And uh, so we encourage everybody to you know anybody that has children that would like to have them dance or sing or. Okay. Uh, well, as you know, the Oxnard Film Society screens films on the first and third Mondays of every month. But since it's a holiday on this Monday, we have a film this Tuesday, February 19th, a great film from Palestine. It's up for Academy Award as a documentary. It's called Five Broken Cameras. Uh, it's about a young man, I mean, about a man, family man in the Palestine who is a farmer, picks up, gets a camera because he wants to document his growing family and turns into an activist as the Israeli government expands their, uh, their growing of their settlement into the West Bank. So it's really a terrific film. Yeah. And on May 20th, we are going to show On the Road, uh, which is Jack Kerouac's uh, novel. And we're going to partner with Carnegie, and we're going to try to get some. Uh, I'm inviting uh, a, uh, a Gerald Nicosia from up in San Francisco area. He's a historian, he's a poet, he's a writer. He's a, he wrote a great book on Kerouac, and he also helped the director, Walter Salas. Uh, he worked as a consultant on the film, and he's writing a book on his experiences. So he's going to be here. Uh, on Monday, but I think also on Sunday or Saturday, we're trying to create a, another event. Right. And obviously, now with uh, Blessing of Ultima, maybe we can work on another event on that. So, we're busy. We're busy. It's on the road, that's a recent movie. On the road, it came out for a short time. It's being re released, yeah. I think, February 29th. 28th. Trying to get together, uh, or we'll get together with uh, Mando. Um, I like to present with a, um, a group of Alpine yeah, at the Cafe and A Street. Um, it's a group of young people and do a little bit of one on one. Hector is one of the heroes, one of the unsung heroes, one of the great heroes of Oxnard, if not the world. He saves lives. He goes into crack houses, bars, where people are at the end of their lives, and this brother drags them out and saves lives. And what we want to do is help them with the arts so that they can find their, their God. But this brother right here, he's a treasure in this community. Thank you. Uh, we are going to probably reschedule the meeting for next time because I, I'm not able to be here. I like to adjourn the meeting in honor of Norma Roman Cabo, who is a uh, Mexican playwright who died recently, who is a friend of Teatro de las Americas, and she, we did a number of her plays here, and she passed away in uh, Mexico City about two weeks ago. Thank you, everybody.
everybody. Thank you.